Folks, today on Tool Tuesday here on the Stony Ridge Farm, we're testing out the Toro. Awesome pole saw, eight foot reach, and we're gonna reach in here and discover there is a side-by-side -side back there. You can't even see it. I'm a Toro fanboy, okay? I'll just say it, I love Toro. Toro products have been super awesome. I've got a Toro zero turn mower. I've got a Toro, a couple Toro leaf blowers, Toro chainsaw, tons of Toro stuff. This is something I've never used before. And this is called the Toro 60 volt cordless pole saw. And we're gonna put it to work. I do have another pole saw on the farm, but with fuel costs rising, I think it's time that we start considering going electric with most of the tools that we can use here on the Stony Ridge farm. So without further ado, we're gonna open up this Toro 60 volt cordless pole saw. Again, I'm a bit of a Toro fanboy, but I'm gonna give you an honest, awesome review today. And we've got a project right here that we've got to take care of and another one on the other side of the farm. So let's have some fun here on Tool Tuesday on the Stony Ridge. Woo! I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. That's right. We're gonna go ahead and show you what comes in the box. This is the tool only. In other words, it doesn't come with the battery or any of that stuff. We're just gonna open her up. Got a scabbard, that's what this is called, scabbard. And our bar, okay. Looks like we might need some tools. I don't know if this thing comes with tools or not. It does. It comes with tools, chain, everything you'll need. Hey, check it out. Not only is it a scrunch, it's also a knife. Cool, okay. I want to make sure if you're looking at getting one of these, is it easy to take apart? Is it easy to put together? Is it easy to store? Can the average homeowner store this in their garage or in their little shed? And here is a very thick book on it. Got a warning, caution, remove any excess debris before opening oil reservoir. Good to know, good to know. So it must have an oiler. Really assembly, all we do is just straighten this guy out. Looks like it's got a little tab right here. Pops into place. Very cool. Does the scrunch work? Yes. That's awesome. So the scrunch will put it together. Man, that's so cool. All right. Well, there's part one of the assembly. And part two. All you do is just pop it together. And there's a little push tab right here. Okay, so for storage, you could pop it back apart, but for what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave this in the shed. I've got plenty of room. We'll snug this guy down. That's awesome that the scrunch allows you to uh, snug everything up. The box says this will reach 10 inch bar and chain, eight foot reach, right there. Awesome. Oh, it's all accessible without any kind of tools. And there's a bar oil container right here too. So we'll have to fill that up with bar oil. Very good. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and put this guy together real quick. I like that you don't have to have any tools to make this thing work. We'll take our chain. Oh, chainsaw chains are always a real gem. There we go. Okay, so we'll slip the chain right over top here. Anybody could put this together. Your great grandma could put it together. My great grandma could put it together. I don't know about yours. Slide this cover back into place. Nice. Now we're gonna put a little bit of bar oil in the bar oil container and we're gonna work on this tree. This is what you call a willow oak. A lot of people call it a pin oak, but it's not a pin oak, it's a willow oak. We're actually gonna give you a little bit of education today on the proper way to use a pole saw. In other words, the proper way to cut. And I'm gonna do a demonstration for you real quick because you can't just go up there and lop it off. It will pinch the bar on your chain. And that's something that we all need to know how to do. So here's where our bar oil goes in place. And by the way, there's a tensioner right over here. You'll use your scrunch to tighten that tensioner up. You want it to be tight where you can pull this up yeah, about a half inch to a quarter of an inch, okay? That's kind of how tight you want it. We're gonna pop the lid off. This has a pretty cool little uh, lid pop right there. What they were asking for uh, in the uh, instructions is to make sure on that little tag, make sure you don't have any debris on here or you'll clog it up, okay? 
put that cap on and we'll make a mess. I always make a mess when I put bar oil in. Now we're ready to cut. Now, what you need to know, we're gonna go ahead and change hats here. Wear safety gear. I'll post a link to the safety gear and to this Toro chainsaw down in the video description. Wear your safety gear. We don't need hearing protection, but we do need head and face protection for this job. This is a fully adjustable helmet with face shield from Echo. So here's our problem tree right here. This is the problem tree. The problem is, <laughs> you'll see in a second, the limbs are too low. <laughs> They're right here in my face. And when I go to mow, I can't mow and I can't see my garden from the front porch. So we're gonna take this saw and we're gonna lop off some of this stuff. Before we do that, I'm gonna take you to a lower lying limb and I'm gonna show you the proper technique for cutting with a pole saw. And I'll also show you how the battery slides on here. So this is the 2.5 amp hour battery, milliamp hour, amp hour. Yep, okay, slide that guy in place. Locks in, pull the trigger. Ooh, yeah. Got to tighten that guy back up again. Got to make sure our tension is just right on this. When you first open up a, a new saw like this, expect to make some minor adjustments. There's actually an oiler on the tip right here too. Okay, now let's give her a try. Cool. Now, this thing also has a little hook on the end right here for hooking onto your limbs and pulling them down just a little bit. Really cool, and it's got some teeth right there too to help you get some grip. Let's get busy. I'm gonna go up here and show you real quick the proper way to cut a limb. We've got some low-lying limbs up here. I think we could teach you guys on. This is a white oak. I'm gonna go on in here and trim back a little bit before we get in and give you guys the education. So you've got a limb right here that you want to cut. When you cut this off, pretend like this is about that big around and way up in the top of the tree. What you want to do is you want to make a cut down here first and then up here so it drops off. So we're going to cut right down here underneath, and this is a really small limb, hopefully it'll work. Uh, we'll cut right up underneath. Just like that. Then we'll cut back just a little ways right back here and it'll drop right off. Okay, see how that drops off? Now for stuff like this, you just go back through and cut the nub off. Awesome, and this thing is super sharp. Really did a great job, as you can see. Now, for those of you who are allergic to poison oak and poison ivy and you don't wanna get close to it, here's the ticket. With a pole saw, you don't have to get close to it. You can get right here and just nip it, okay? You don't have to worry. There we go. We just wrapped up all of that um, <laughs> uh, poison ivy right there. Now we're gonna get in this tree. And again, like I said, what happens is with a limb, let me just grab a, a limb real quick and show you. When it's hanging off the tree right here, you wanna cut there about halfway through underneath and then come back behind it and cut here. So what happens is it just leaps off the tree when you cut it. And that's the technique I'll be using for all the cutting that I'm gonna do right here. So let's see how this does. And then we're gonna head over to the other side of the farm and give you some more examples of how awesome this thing works. So far, so good. Um, I'm betting it takes less than two minutes to do this. <laughs> All right, I'm impressed, man. This thing does awesome. Really impressed. Look at that. We opened it right up where we could see up underneath here. Now, what you need to know if, uh, we need an educational moment here. What you need to know is if you're cutting with a pole saw like this, you wanna go ahead and cut all the way up next to the uh, tree. So in other words, I make three cuts. The first cut is up, okay? That upward cut um, frees up the branch. Then I cut behind that so it drops off. 
Then I go back and take the nub off and I wanna get within probably a half inch of the trunk of the tree. Remember when you're trimming trees, guys, that if you trim this tree in the winter time, you trim for growth. In other words, it'll spurt little uh, sprouts out. If you trim it in the summertime, you trim to prune. So winter time is for growth, summertime is to prune. This is a big, beautiful tree. This is gonna be over the next 60 years, this is just gonna be an awesome, awesome tree. When I bought the property, that tree was that tall five years ago. Awesome. Let's go to the other side of the farm and show you guys. We're cutting along the fence line and I've got some low-lying limbs that are hanging out. As you can see, <laughs> we've got a problem right here. So in those bushes, you can barely see the side-by-side -side sitting over there. So we've got a lot of debris and brush hanging out over in the uh, fence line right here. And this is the fence line on the farm. You might not have anything like this, but uh, around the outside edges of my entire farm, my fence line, I have about a six to 12 foot buffer zone so that tree limbs don't fall on my fence and let my cows out, which is very, very important. Now, we gotta really put this thing to work. Those few limbs that we just cut over at the house are nothing compared to this right here. And basically I just have to go through once or twice a year and trim all this up. I've got equipment that will clip it. I've got a big tree clip that goes on my uh, skid loader, but this right here is gonna be so much easier, so much better. Cool, let's get busy. So far I'm impressed, really lightweight to hold up. So and if you had weak arms or weaker shoulders, I think this is much lighter than the standard one that you would get, a gas powered one's much heavier. Boy, we made quick work of that. Look, there's a side-by-side -side over there. <laughs> That's crazy. What quick work we made. I am super impressed with the pole saw. Again, I'll post a link in the video description where you need to pick these up. Uh, I don't think you can buy it on Amazon just yet, uh, but where you need to pick that up is at your local Toro dealer. So find, uh, get online. I'll post a link to the Toro website for you guys uh, and you can get online and find your closest dealer. So look at that. Now I've got a big mess to clean up. Uh, I give this thing an A+. Uh, no fuel, no problem, and the battery hasn't even shown signs of any issues. I did lose the chain at one point. When you get into thick brush like this and debris, and you start bumping the chain on stuff, like as I was cutting one limb, I bumped it on another one, and that kicked the chain off. So you gotta learn, you gotta be familiar with your tool, and uh, man, it just took two seconds, popped it right back on and got busy. Super sharp, super strong, very torquey, very robust, very happy guys. Thanks a lot for joining me here on Tool Tuesday. I got a lot of work to do, man. Uh, we'll see you next time. Please pound that like button. I'd love to have you back here on the farm with me. All around us is 150 acre first generation farm. Beautiful. Thanks guys. See you next time. Woo! Come on down to the stone. So you guys know, all of this brush gets put back in the woods and is used for wildlife habitat. We're all about good wildlife habitat on your farm. For every one species you can bring to your farm, it will help support eight more species to thrive. Great tool. See you next time.